and welcome to my easy to understand guide to the return to La Revenance and audiences. This video is going to be relevant to you, particularly if you are studying the EDUCAS A-Level Media Studies exam, because this show appears on the Component 2 exam paper. Not all schools study this TV programme, so if you don't study it, please don't panic. I do have other videos about some of the other set texts on my channel. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at a variety of the ways in which the target audience are engaged by the set episode in particular, but also by the series as a whole. The show might be seen as quite relatable to some audiences in some ways. So there's a variety of genders in terms of characters. Um, there's a variety of ages. You, so you've got young, old, teenage children. You've got um, pensioners, male, female. Um, so there's quite a variety of characters that audiences might be able to identify themselves with at least one of those. There are some quite relatable themes as well. So the themes of death and loss and grief are something that many audiences, particularly adult audiences, will be able to relate to or may have encountered at some point in their lives. The show offers some escapist um, aspects to audiences too. So it's set in kind of this quite beautiful mountainous part of rural France, um, which often feels kind of quite romantic place to, to live and to visit. The fact that there is some kind of love stories and romances that go on without the show as well might also offer some escapism and certainly it adds to some of the entertainment factor. So you have kind of love and romance um, kind of mini narratives running alongside quite an exciting and dramatic supernatural narrative. And those kind of dramatic storylines would make the show quite entertaining for audiences. They use cliffhangers at the end of episodes in order to kind of make audiences want to watch the next episode and the next episode and then at the end of the series as well to make them watch the next series. So the use of narrative devices to engage audiences is quite common too. There's a lot of enigma in this set episode in particular. So if you think of Barthes enigma codes, you know, all these unanswered questions that audiences would have, you know, who is Victor? Why is he standing in the middle of the road? Is uh, Camille really dead? How did she come back from the dead? What are all these dead animals in the lake? What's the lake got to do with it? Um, so there's lots of questions that come up in that first episode that do not get answered. Um, and I suppose the idea is that if you watch the next episode, you might feel as though some more questions may get answered. So it keeps audiences coming back for more in the hopes that some explanations will be given for some of these things. The use of their social media uh, platforms for marketing the show would offer audiences the opportunity for collaboration and social interaction with other people who enjoyed it. So on their Twitter pages, on the fan made pages, you know, it would allow audiences to communicate with other people who also enjoyed the show. The DVD covers feature testimonials from companies or brands that enjoyed the show and that makes it feel like more high quality and something that's perhaps going to be uh, good to watch. They also mention on the DVD cover things like the Peabody Award um, and that is potentially something that audiences might find out about from other areas as well, not just the DVD cover. Winning an award is a great way of drawing in audiences because audiences think, oh, it must be good if it's won an award or it must be high quality. Um, so it may well make audiences want to watch your show more. The Returned also received a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes at the time. So, um, you know, this idea of word of mouth from other people who've seen it. Word of mouth marketing is so important now. If you can get fans to say online that they really liked it, it can be so much more persuasive than the actual marketing materials. So many people may have watched it because it was recommended to them online, whether it's through review sites or whether it's through recommendations on things like Netflix. Obviously, one target audience for the show are fans of the supernatural kind of subgenre. Um, and so you think about the way they've targeted those fans, both in the marketing materials and in the actual episode itself. Lots of dark, low key lighting, misty locations, tense, dramatic music, um, camera framing that stops you from seeing everything that's going on. There's ghostly elements in the um, opening sequence and in the trailer as well. So it connotes some supernatural uh, themes to the audience and that would have drawn those people in. Fans of the zombie subgenre as well may have been drawn in in the set episode. There's definitely some elements that may 
connote or hint at that zombie subgenre. People clearly coming back to the dead, uh, coming back to life that were dead. Um, you know, there's the idea that uh, we see the, the dead butterfly coming to life as well. Um, at some point later in the series, we we do see the characters starting to decompose. So bits of their skin kind of coming off on their faces and, and them starting to rot. But actually the, the zombie subgenre isn't entirely clear and some audiences were drawn in thinking this was going to be about zombies and then disappointed that it clearly was not a zombie programme um, and it's certainly very unconventional. Some audiences liked that it was unconventional, you know, some people like that idea of genre with a twist. Um, so you can't please everybody. Um, but it's useful to know that some people were disappointed that it didn't live up to their expectations. The age range for the show, the target age range for the show, is mainly age 15 and above. Um, the fact that this was on, um, you know, quite late at night, prime time slot after the watershed, that would have indicated to a target audience that it was, you know, aimed at a slightly more adult audience. Um, they used a lot of social media to draw in audiences. So, you know, the use of Twitter and Facebook, interactive, um, you know, tours on their website would have engaged those young audiences in particular. It was streamed on all four for quite a, a long time um, and streaming your programme online is going to appeal to a younger, modern target audience too. A lot of the marketing materials actually featured the teenage or child characters, so Victor, Camille, Lena, you know, they appeared on the posters and the DVD covers and so clearly trying to engage both a youth audience and an adult audience too. The target audience for the show is considered to what we call ABC1, which means that they are reasonably affluent, reasonably educated, um, and you can kind of tell that from the programme itself. So there's a very complex narrative that sometimes you have to watch a couple of times to work out what's going on. Um, it's not a really easy, simple to understand programme. So, um, you know, that might indicate that the audience is gonna need to be a bit more educated to understand it. The fact that it's a foreign language programme, so when it was shown in Britain, it had to have subtitles. Um, and subtitles do sometimes put off audiences that aren't as educated. Obviously, you've got to read the subtitles to work out what's going on. So that might well have targeted slightly more educated audiences. Subtitles do put off a lot of audiences in general. Uh, you know, anything foreign language programming may well um, you know, put off or alienate a lot of mainstream audiences. So it perhaps, you know, indicates that the audience is perhaps a bit more cultured, a bit more open to watching foreign language programmes and films. Another target audience might be the people who are familiar with the original film uh, that the TV series is based on, and they have engaged them in the marketing materials and in the opening sequence for the show by mentioning that it is based on a film and they give the title of the film and the director of the film. So um, trying to make it clear that this is based on an existing product, potentially to bring in those pre-sold fans of that film. They do mention the names of some of the companies involved, like Canal Plus, and that definitely would have brought in some of the pre-sold fans of those institutions, maybe people who had seen programmes made by those companies elsewhere and enjoyed those. Even though the characters are quite diverse, and you might think that there is someone there for everyone to be able to identify with or like, there is a total lack of ethnic diversity in the programme, you know, perhaps reflecting the fact that this is rural France that it's set in. Um, but it may well alienate some audiences, the fact that the cast is basically predominantly white um, and predominantly kind of middle to upper class may well alienate um, audiences who feel that the show just does not reflect enough diversity in terms of ethnicity. So that was my very easy to understand guide to the returned and audiences. If you would like to subscribe, you will find lots of videos on my channel uh, re relevant to the A-level media studies qualification and indeed lots of stuff relevant to all exam boards. If there's a video that you would like that I don't have, you can leave a little comment below and I'll see what I can do.